we are now moving on to the last keynote for the day. Please welcome virtually connecting with us, uh, Ms. Sarah Pinch, Managing Director from Pinch Point Communications. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. The stage is all yours. Thank you so very much for joining in today. Thank you. I, um, I join you from Bristol uh, in the southwest of England. Uh, and I'm really honoured to be part of, uh, of this event. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, my experience of being a female leader um, in the public relations industry. Uh, but I wanted to start by sharing with you a, a, a slide or two, if I may. Um, and I'm sorry that I'm not able to hear your thoughts and your reflections. Um, but first of all, um, I wanted to uh, show you um, this, this slide and uh, ask you to just reflect where you are um, about what one might think about these four different women. So we have a woman called Mary who didn't go to university, who went straight from school education into working for the prestigious broadcaster here in the United Kingdom of the British Broadcasting Corporation and now works in corporate communications. We have a, another woman there called Tabitha who runs a very successful corporate communications consultancy, chairs a charity and holds two non-executive positions on national boards across the United Kingdom. Then we have a, another woman there called Susie who is a fellow of her own professional body, uh, been listed on a list of global influential women and uh, is obviously very fit and does triathlons. Um, sorry, I don't quite know what happened there. Um, and then Kate, who is a mum to an eight-year-old little girl, works full-time, enjoys cooking and having people around the table and breaking bread. Uh, and also has a side business where she sells some chutney. Now, when I've used this slide before, I have asked people to think of words that they would associate uh, with those women. And people use words like ambitious, um, determined for Mary. And you'll remember that Mary is a woman who didn't go to university but has obviously managed to forge an incredibly successful career. When we ask people to reflect on Tabitha, they talk about someone who is very determined, very successful, very busy, very organized, holding down a number of different roles. When we talk about Susie, again, the word determination often comes up, uh, someone who's very fit, uh, someone who's uh, very good at organising their time. And then when we talk about Kate, they tend to reflect on kindness and generosity and um, being able to be hospitable. And the point of sharing those four women is those four women are all me. They are all different ways that I could introduce myself. And I guess I wanted to share with you uh, today, um, as you come towards the end of your event, that it's very interesting how we choose to describe ourselves and indeed what we think of people when we meet them and the assumptions that we might make. Uh, particularly, we know that this is something that affects women in business, women in leadership, much more than it does men. And in my company, uh, Pinchpoint Communications, we have done quite a lot of research into what it feels like to be a woman working in leadership positions, not just within communications, but within construction, law, uh, within health, uh, right across sectors. And we know that it is different for women. We know that there is, as Hillary Clinton describes it, an entire different lexicon that is used to describe what it's like to be a woman and what it's like to be a leader. And I suppose my reflections on that have been that it is very important, events like you are attending today are exceptionally important 
for women to build networks, for men to be very strong allies with women, and for the communications industry, uh, which is female dominated, to really lead the way in promoting our women and supporting our women and encouraging our women uh, to be in those leadership positions. I did a little bit of research and let me, uh, if I can keep on top of the technology here, let me see if I can just share uh, this slide with you. Um, and I wanted here to look at um, where, where, are, where are all the female leaders? And these are some of the very significant organisations uh, operating in the United Kingdom. I did this in a little bit of a hurry yesterday, which means I did update it yesterday, so it should say 2022. And the words in green are where, in the first set of bullet points, those organisations have a female director of communications. And in the uh, five um, agencies, those are the top five agencies, according to the Homes Report in the United Kingdom, uh, there are four of them that are run by women, which is unusual. When I presented this slide in 2020, only one of those was run by a woman. But you can see that many of the great institutions in this country, the Home Office in Central Government, the I IBM, the BBC, ITV, NHS England, which run every single NHS service across the country, the most senior communications advisor in number 10, although obviously that's about to change, some of our banks, Barclays Bank, the National Trust, which own gigantic amounts of uh, countryside and country houses in this country, the Foreign Office, the Department for um, Health and Social Care, the Ministry of Justice, the Church of England and the Cooperative Bank are all run in terms of their corporate affairs departments by men. And so where are all the women and what happens to them? Well, in this country, they leave. So we have a 76% dominated female profession in corporate communications. But when we get to the senior leadership positions, that literally turns on its head. And we see 25% of organizations led by women. So women leave us and we need to stop that happening. Um, some research done by the Chartered Institute of Public Relations showed that actually at the manager level within the industry, it's pretty equal numbers of men and women. But once we get up to heads of department or associate directors, that starts to fall away with only 20% of women versus uh, the rest of men. And then when we get into directors and managing partners, we are, as I say, looking at between 75% men and 25% women. So I wanted to leave you with some positive ideas, I hope, which are about networking today being a really important example of that for you. And I can see by my view of the room that there are many conversations going on and many connections being made or perhaps being made for the first time or reconnected. And I think that is very, very important. I think for those of us that do end up in leadership positions as women and indeed male allies, it is very important for us to continue to talk about these conversations. There's an emerging conversation in the public relations industry in Great Britain about the impact of the pandemic on our mental health and how we can support each other through the post pandemic phase. We know that the pandemic has hit women much, much harder than men. And so how do we ensure that that doesn't have an additional impact on how women are able to contribute to corporate communications and marketing, public relations? It's very, very important that they don't fall off. I think the real challenges for me as a woman are around my time. I am the mother to an eight-year-old. I run my business. I chair a charity, I sit on two boards, I am incredibly organised um, and, uh, and I have learnt the joy of outsourcing. So <laughs> the joy of not cooking every meal myself, the joy of not cleaning my own house um, and relying on other people to help. 
I think the other challenge sometimes is I am the only woman. I still walk into board meetings with clients and I am the only woman or there may be one other woman in the room. And that can be a challenge. I think there are women who think the way to lead is to become an alpha male. I think there are men who think the only way to lead is to become an alpha male. I think there are amazing men and women who understand that values led leadership is the way to go. And listening more than talking is very important. I think there's great support and opportunities for us in leadership. And I think there are fewer rules for women to follow because often we will be the first person, the first woman in that role. And I've had the great privilege of that through my career of being the first director of communications and indeed the first female director of communications in an international development charity, in the railway and then in the NHS and obviously setting up my own agency 10 years ago. So we can decide our own rules to a certain extent. I think there are great networks. I've mentioned that word a number of times and I make no apology for it. I think it is absolutely vital to our success, our joint success, when we're working on campaigns that cut across all kinds of different agencies, different organisations, different sectors. We must have strong networks. But I think particularly when we're thinking about leadership, those networks are very important. And finally, for me, it's about doing the thing that makes you happy, doing the thing that brings you joy outside of work, uh, whether that's singing, dancing, walking, meeting with friends, uh, in my case, kind of all of the above, but my great passion is running. And without running, I literally would not be able to do my job, uh, be a mum, be a good friend. Um, and I have found that to be such therapy, um, literally heading out the door with my trainers and uh, some very, very loud music and uh, clearing my mind and coming back and getting on with the next challenge. So I think my time is drawing to an end and I am absolutely delighted to have been able to share what I hope have been some helpful reflections on the research we've done here in the United Kingdom, the work that I was privileged to lead when I was uh, president of the Chartered Institute of Public Relations in 2015. And I'm so sorry that I can't uh, take any questions from you. I don't think that's possible. I don't know if it is possible. Um, if it is, I would be delighted to do so. Uh, if it isn't, uh, then I think I just leave you to enjoy uh, the rest of your session today and indeed uh, the awards later on. Thank you so much. <laughs>